whenever you want, I can start. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today's Applying Ethology webinar. Um, before we start, just two things um, uh, in terms of uh, housekeeping rules. Uh, the first one is please make sure that your microphone and your camera are switched off to have the presentation run as smoothly as possible. And second, if you have a question uh, for the speakers at the end of the presentation, um, you're fine to, to type them into the chat. Or if you would like to, you can also raise your hand with a raise hand icon that you can find in the reactions uh, folder or on the reactions uh, icon on the bottom of the Zoom functions. Um, and we will call you and you can ask your question uh, online and live. Um, with that, I'm uh, incredibly happy to today present uh, or today's speaker, um, Olivier Friat, uh, Friat, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and Marco Gamba. Um, if you are analyzing or live coding animal videos or animal behavior, um, you at some point get probably in touch with software that helps you analyzing uh, these videos and these behavior scorings. Um, and uh, if you're familiar with that, you at some point probably uh, had heard the name Boris. Uh, Boris is a, an open source and a free software that uh, gives you a lot of options and a lot of functions to do exactly this, to analyze behavior of animals or analyze behavior and score behavior. and. Uh, yeah, today we have basically the, the two masterminds behind Boris here with us in our webinar. And I'm yeah looking very much forward to the tutorial and presentation about all the functions that Boris can offer us uh, as animal behavior researchers. And with that, I'm giving the stage to Marco and Olivier. Thank you so much, uh, Christian, and thanks for inviting us and presenting some of the functions of uh, Boris and some of the ideas behind Boris, uh, because we are online and we cannot uh, exchange uh, the podium as we usually do. Uh, most of the talking would be on me, but uh, the, the real mastermind behind Boris is not me, it's Olivier that is with us. So at the end, uh, if there is some question that I cannot uh, answer of course uh, he will be able to do that so um i will start with a short introduction about uh, what is boris and how boris works and um so the idea behind boris uh, is something that is very common for everybody working with uh, human and animal behavior so the idea is that we need uh, to uh, develop methodologies that are uh, describing and analyzing quantitative aspects uh, uh, of behavior and we know that uh, when we want to publish our results uh, whatever is the animal model we work on uh, we need to uh, do better analysis uh, better uh, uh, workflow for the for the work we are gonna uh, we are gonna um, we're gonna develop and we are developing and um, at the same time, what has happened during the last uh, 25 years, uh, which is more or less uh, my scientific career, is that uh, uh, we have a lot of new tools. Uh, we have a new photo and video cameras uh, and the new photo and video cameras can store a large number of video recordings uh, and uh, you can uh, look at the animals even if you are not there you can use uh, remote video cameras or camera traps or those new devices in which you can collect information about behavior and then uh, after that uh, you can analyze and you have to analyze uh, those data so um very very often uh, uh, the problem uh, of uh, tackling this kind of uh, uh, of works was that you got to code uh, something or you got to spend a lot of money and buy software and um, the idea that uh, started uh, in our minds uh, when we developed boris was uh, to provide ourselves first and then maybe some other and uh, it has revealed as a as an idea that was useful for many many people uh, something that they can use on very different computers uh, 
that they can provide to students. That was the problem at the very beginning. I remember very well the afternoon in which uh, Olivier came to me and says, and said, oh, oh, Marco, we can develop something in Python uh, which is useful for the students because a lot of students are uh, is coming to me and they're saying, oh, my computer uh, cannot use that software we paid a lot of money for. Uh, do you have a computer to uh, give me because mine is not good enough? enough to work with uh, that other software and stuff like that and so uh the idea is to the idea was to put together something that was easy of use uh, that was very flexible so a lot of different uh, uh, young scientists and scientists working on very different speeches very different problem uh should be able to use boris for their tasks and uh, also another thing that uh, the olivier really worked a lot on was the idea to have a workflow uh, and Boris as part of that workflow. We never meant to have Boris as being the start and the end of, uh, of an animal behavior or human behavior project, but the idea was to have the chance uh, to develop something that was a part of a workflow made possibly by other software and maybe some other free software. So, um, uh, availability. So Boris, as you all might know, is free. It's open source. You can download from our website. You can use uh, with any of your tasks and any of your problem. It will not pay uh, nothing for that. You, you will not pay uh, a quid for that. Uh, Boris is available for different platforms, uh, Windows, uh, uh, Linux, uh, uh, Chromebook, and also Apple. And uh, we also have a Boris app, uh, which is under development. Uh, and now we got only an alpha version for Android, uh, which some way will uh, enable uh, people to use uh, uh, Boris on their mobile phones or on their uh, tablets. Um, we also uh, tried, uh, Olivier also put some time in uh, using Boris on Raspberry Pi 4 and so if and the 400 as well and so if some of you might have an interest in using Boris uh, with this device you may get in touch with us and uh, Olivier will be happy to provide you more information on that so why open source so the idea and the limitation of many other softwares where that uh, uh, when you use a particular software I will not put the names on the table but you all know uh, the, the very expensive softwares that are around is that uh, you need the videos with a particular codec uh, we need the videos with a particular system uh, and you cannot use uh, your uh, your uh, software to analyze those videos so uh, the, the the idea that uh, Olivier developed immediately after the start of the project was to have uh, VLC as a media player and now we also have a uh, versions with other media players that we are working on at the moment and we can use the FFmpeg uh, uh, multimedia framework. Uh, this is very important because this enables to use a lot of different formats. So imagine that in our minds uh, the problem is that we have uh, hundreds of students interested in animal and human behavior every year enrolled at the University of Torino and the problem was to provide them with a software they can use without providing them a particular computer because we don't have the money to buy so many computers every year and to give them to the students so the the answer to all this was Boris software you can use on many platforms it's free you can use uh, a previously written code like VLC of FMPEG or Matplotlib for visualization, uh, which are already inside the, the, the software. And you can use that on any computer that uh, your students are uh, coming to you with. So who is using Boris? I mean, at the very beginning, we had something in our mind and what has happened is that the, the, the real world exceeded a lot our expectation and our original ideas. So there, there's a lot of people uh, using Boris in many different uh, application from uh, uh, psychological studies, pep therapy, human animal interactions. Uh, use of animals for a particular task for example uh, police uh, using horses uh, 
uh, to go around the city to monitor was what is happening there is a lot of people using boris uh, for in situation in which there is a driving there is behavior of people driving in particular situation of course observing animals uh, observing animals and humans as i said before also in pet therapy context or in some cases observing uh animals in very particular situation like uh, comes uh, attached to the to the um, carapax of uh, turtles and stuff like that and there's also a lot of people using boris uh, with insects with small mammals and recently there is a lot of people using boris also in uh when scoring sports and so we have a, really a lot of different applications there are really extreme situation which i'm not describing at this uh, at this stage but uh, there is a lot really going on and we are very happy and very surprised from this so what boris does for those that are not uh, really confident with what uh, uh, is a, an event logging software boris records when you press a key on your keyboard and that's the start of a particular behavior and then when you press it again it's the stop of that particular behavior of course there is some variation onto this but this is the basic idea uh, so boris of course does even logging and you can use boris to uh, do video and audio coding and uh, you can record the video audio position at which keys are pressed and the, 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 let's say the, the, the video uh, or the audio uh, is uh, tracked constantly with the time in which you press the, the, the keys. So there's no need to stop the video and then press the key or press the key and then stop the video. This happens automatically. And this is, of course, a difference with some software uh, which were open source uh, some years ago, but uh, the, cannot integrate the two situation. And uh, you can also do, as uh, as Christian mentioned before, live observations. Uh, there's there's quite a lot of people using Boris for live observations live observation and uh, you can use your computer uh, or your uh, uh, notebook uh, to do live observation in front of your animals without recording the video of course there are situations in, in which the video is very important some others in which it's difficult to record and it's up to the user to decide what the, they wanted to do um, as i said before and it, i I want to stress this because for us this is really very important boris is part of an efficient flow so we wanted to uh, create an integration in between boris uh, and uh, beatrix which is another software that olivier i and some other colleagues uh, developed over the last years and then uh, but also with prot uh, and uh, also producing data that can be opened and analyzed or visualized with excel or with the spss or with r so we never meant boris to be the start and the end of the project we want the data from boris to be available for other software and other analysis um main features so uh what you can do in boris is to configure an unlimited number of subjects an unlimited number of behaviors an unlimited number of modifiers so imagine a behavior is play and uh, you can play uh, with a ball which is a modifier or with a stick which is another modifier or you can play uh, with uh with a crayon which is another modifier and um you can also set uh, an unlimited number of independent variables what is an independent variable so we'll see this later but it's something which remain constant over a particular observation like for example uh, the number of tourists in a particular situation the number of visitors in a zoo the numbers of operators in a particular situation and uh, you can analyze within a project an unlimited number of observation live or from media as i said before uh, as we said we wanted to uh, use a very versatile media player and vlc was the first choice now we are trying to use also other libraries uh, but uh, i will leave, i will leave this for uh, questions if uh, there's someone interested for that 
and uh, of course we can coding the media files at different speed so you can uh, i mean it depends from from the task you're working on in some situation we are interested in describing the behavior of a particular species in the different details some others for example are looking only at aggressive fights in between the animals so if the animals are sleeping there will be no aggressive fights so you want to go uh, very fast in your video or you can go very fast in your video because there's nothing happening and at some other time you want to decrease the speed until 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 to see very well what is happening but what you can do and this is something that can be interesting for those for example working in in face face displays you can also use a frame by frame mode so you can uh, you can go frame by frame in your observation to catch very tiny particular details and changes happening in your subject um, you can use up to eight media files uh, synchronously played so uh, for example uh, we started with the idea that uh, there was a colleague of us working uh, with cameras, uh, looking at an aquarium from above and from the side view. And so you can use two in this situation, but you can also imagine, and uh, we have several users doing that, that uh, you might be in a situation in which somebody is driving in the car and you want to look at the face of this guy, at what uh, it, it is looking at in the rear view mirrors uh, or what happens uh, around the car. And so you might want to have uh, many different uh, uh, cameras up to eight you can you, you can do that in boris also for psychological exp experiments this is very convenient because you can look for example at the stimulus a, a monitor that provides a stimulus and then at the same time you can look at the face of the of the guy participating uh, uh, to the experiment uh, you can enqueue the, the, the files, the media files for playing and the even time in the case you have uh, many videos that are put in, uh, in a queue, they are put in a queue, is that you can work on the cumulative time or not uh, and what happens across the cumulative time. And you can, uh, at the end of all these, of your analysis, you can uh, export uh, the coded events uh, as plain text files and this is what uh, we really want to do to ensure that you can use those files with r with spss uh, with uh, excel or with the other softwares you are used to for the uh, data wrangling or the statistical uh, analysis so basically, uh, maybe for those that are already experienced with uh, behavioral analysis, uh, this is going to be a very uh, obvious uh, point, but the points toward the two main typical uh, animal behavior or human behavior kind of uh, results. So, so the time budget information, so how much time is invested by your animals in the particular behaviors. And on the other side, uh, Boris can also be used to produce uh, strings of behavior that can be used to build uh, uh, what is called a, a flow diagram or some, for somebody a sociogram or something like that, depending on the aspects you want to focus on. Okay, so uh, you go, you got two, two different ideas here and you can have them integrated in what you're doing in Boris and then to export the data on one direction and the other direction. And um, again, on the, on the main features, uh, uh, this is something that probably is not applying for those that are uh, really into animal behavior or, or human behavior in the scientific approach. But there's a lot of people who is just maybe scoring some behaviors and need to, uh, needs to have a look at what happens, uh, uh, let's say, in the, in the large scale. We provide a time budget analysis uh, and an events plot, uh, we'll see later. And then you can also visualize a spectrogram and a waveform to look at the video, at the audio that which is associ associated with your video. And you, as I said before, can export the data in various open formats for further analysis. Um, following some requests that we got a couple of uh, 
uh, years ago, maybe a bit more now, uh, four or five years ago. Uh, there is also the chance uh, to do geometric measurements uh, and also to put markers uh, when you use the frame by frame mode. So there are a number of things you can put on uh, your video while uh, using Boris if you want to uh, uh, put a, a, a sort of a sign in a sign post in a particular point uh, or another particular point. Uh, what Boris is not is that it's not an automatic video analysis system. So if you're looking for uh, something which is uh, sort of a magic thing, uh, it's not Boris. And uh, there's no interface with live recording system. So you got to choose whether you want to do the live observation or you record your video and then use the recorded video in Boris. You cannot interface through a video camera or any other kind of recording and using Boris while the camera is recording. This is something that at this stage we cannot do with Boris. But remember, it's free and open source. It's not, it's not only something that you get for free. It's also something that is open source and you can fork it and add your functions. And somebody really uh, did it very successfully and we were very impressed. And uh, I'm, I'm it's very easy to impress me, but uh, impressing Olivier is much more difficult uh, in terms of scripting. And uh, there is somebody that really customized Boris for their own uh, uh, research needs in a brilliant way. So uh, before I get a bit uh, uh, more into the details, there is some uh, final note of this introduction. So there is an official website, which is this one. Uh, you don't need to write it down, or if you don't know it, you will have it in the slides that I will share with Christian and uh, the other colleagues later on. And uh, there is some uh, videos uh, on YouTube. There, there, there are some videos on YouTube where you can get some uh, um, tutorial and some presentation and of course there is the source code, uh, source co source code and uh, the issue tracker that you can find on github uh, under olivia's page and there is a paper this is the the, the user guide and there is uh, also a paper that we published in 2016 in methods in ecology and evolution and it was very successful in terms of citations 630 citation uh, last week and uh, now uh, I will get a bit more into the details for those that are not experienced with Boris. And uh, so this is uh, the idea of Boris. You got, uh, you got a video in the middle, for example, and uh, there is a media that you want to log on. And uh, what happens is that uh, uh, you got a focal subject and when you decided to have a focal subject uh, and uh, define this you will see in a second how to define subjects in a short while you can define subjects before you start your uh, uh, your coding and when you are defining your subjects then if you press uh, the key associated with the subject the name of your subject will come i over here but you of course can move this in other position in your screen and uh, also when uh, there is uh, an, the, 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 a particular behavior is activated, you will see the behavior which is going on at the moment, just to be sure that what you're doing is what you, you meant to do and not uh, happen by chance. Then you have a toolbar with all the different uh, uh, usual buttons over here. You can play, pause, go fast forward or, or rewind your video and start again from the beginning. You can uh, decrease, increase uh, the speed or go back to 1-1 one, one, and then uh, you can take a snapshot uh, and you can go frame by frame. And uh, from this event log you see this is simply the list of behaviors that has been coded for this particular video at this stage and you see for different individuals you see the start and the stop of the different behaviors and we'll come to more details in a short while there is also the situation in which you have different cameras as i mentioned uh, before a lot of people is using boris for, for driving 
um, driving behaviors to study driving behaviors and here for example you see what the driver can see on one side and the other side on one mirror the other mirror and uh, you can see the three media together they can be synchronized you can also set an offset to be sure that you can synchronize your videos and have them going on at the same time in the same moment um it's very important i will come back to this later but it's it's very important if you use more than a monitor and you have maybe two or three monitors of course you can undock the different uh, uh, windows you see here you can put them on one monitor or another or keep on your computer and an extra monitor the video you decide whatever you you can do that with boris uh, you can also do the live observation. The view with the live observation will have no media, of course, but you can have your uh, your subjects and your behaviors that you set before, and you can look at the time going on uh, since the start of your observation, and that timing will be bound to your coding for the different behaviors of the different uh, subjects you are looking at. And then uh, when you want to stop, you stop your live observation over here. Uh, as I said before, there is the perspective uh, to have a Boris, uh, uh, a Boris app, and uh, in the in the perspective of the Boris app, we also developed the coding pads. So you can have coding pads if, for example, you have a touchpad computer or a touchpad notebook, you can touch on the screen and use the different uh, previously selected uh, buttons that are selected by the user are put together by the user uh, you can just set your behaviors and the system will provide you with a coding pad and you just need to tap on the different coding pad uh, that you want to set the start or the end of a particular behavior and then the subjects with the same idea okay so let's, uh, let's move to probably to one of the most important pillars when you want to start an animal behavior project. And this pillar is probably the etogram. So the etogram is something which uh, is very customizable for any of us. Uh, if I set it for you, somebody will say, ah, it's not what I want. And some other will say, oh, uh, it's completely different from what I wanted. So good. With Boris, you can do from scratch. So there's nothing that, that comes with the software. You can create these lines and you can, put, you can decide whether you have a st states or point events. So state event is a state, point event is a point event. And that also depends on the kind of approach you want to use to your coding. You can define a key. As you can see, keys can be capitals or non-capitals. And uh, you can have more than a key for different behavior. We'll come to this in a second. And then you have a code for your, for your behavior. The code must be unique. So one behavior, one code. One behavior or two behaviors may have the same key associated with them. We usually suggest to have a description and we can also set categories. So you can have a category categories for the different behaviors you want to uh, to set before you start with your study and then you might also have modifiers I already put an example of modifiers uh, before so I will not tell it again and you can also set exclusions what is an exclusion it means that when my animal is running it, it will be or it will not be sleeping okay so I I want to say to tell Boris that when I press W for walking and I press S for sleeping, that S will automatically stop W, right? So this is what we call a mutual exclusion and you can set with a, a small table that I'm going to show you in a second, this exclusion table. So this is the story. If you want to do a, a mutual exclusion with uh, some behaviors uh, against this is what you will get you can also add as i said before uh behavioral categories so when you start your project you can decide the categories and then associate the different behaviors with those categories 
why you can add more than a key to the to different behaviors because for example in some situation it's difficult to decide immediately what's happening let me give you an example uh, i work a lot with vocalizations and most of you of you if you know me probably know me because of my bioacoustic studies so the idea is uh, maybe when my students are working on sounds and are scoring behaviors uh, together with listening to vocalizations they might need some time to decide whether a vocalization is one or another no problem they can associate for example v with the with different vocalizations and then when i press v on my keyboard boris will ask me okay i have a lot of things associated with v which one do you really want to attach to this particular behavior you're looking at and so you can choose later on the one you really want to associate okay so you imagine i associate scream when you press scream boris will go back to your video and start again playing back your video right so there is this sort of automatic interaction which is very convenient when you do a larger scale project so time is flying so let me just introduce you to modifiers you may have different types of modifiers uh, this is very common for all of us for example imagine uh, objects uh, that your animals are inter interacting with but you can also have uh, a modifier for example if, if you're uh, coding a social play situation you can automatically move your list of subjects into the modifiers so you can say for example that the animal nina is playing with animal sharky okay and you can set this as a modifier okay so when you want to look at what nina does you can stop to the fact that nina was playing at some point but if you want to concentrate on who is playing Nina with, you can bring up the modifier and see how many time uh, or how many times uh, Nina spent uh, playing with uh, Imal or Sharky or another one. Um, okay, you can all use coding maps. So for those working, for example, in, in a captive or farm situation, this is a very common feature. So you can upload an image of a particular area uh, imagine, for example, an enclosure in a zoo. This is an enclosure in which uh, I think our student was working with, was observing Okapis. And you have different areas of the zoo. And in these different areas that you can then define with the different areas of different colors, you can click to associate the area with a particular behavior so for example when you have a behavior coding map you can set that uh, i i click on a particular behavior which is associated with the map the map uh, is coming out and you can click okay red area this is where this behavior happened and then at the end of the project, you can track where the different behaviors were uh, performed by your animals okay uh, there are other situations. This is a, a very uh, uh, basic map that we developed many years ago for a project based uh, on facial expressions. And this is another situation that we use a lot for the students uh, when we do the, the, the long uh, training uh, we are used to do with our students. So you can set the different uh, areas on a, on a tennis table uh, table uh, and uh, you can uh, just track where the ball is going and which is the action performed by the players and so this is of course a kind of an example you can uh, think about when you want to de will develop your own situation um, let me mention the subjects so um, you can add the subjects an unlimited number of subjects uh in the, at the same uh, uh in the same way you add behaviors so you decide uh who are the subjects and we also uh, suggest usually to provide some information about uh the different subjects because 
what you can do later on is to import the subjects and the ethogram into a new Boris project. And for example, I think many of us are, are probably instructors. So you have a student, the student did a great work, and then another student need to start from scratch because there's no chance to import or export the information that the previous student worked on or that ourselves worked on. And so in this case, you can use a project in Boris to import into another project all information regarding uh, behaviors, different states, different point events, and the different subjects. So this is very convenient. And then also the student, the new student, will have a description of the animals that he has to look at. Let me let me say something about this, because in many situations we can look at the big picture, but then if you want to understand very well what the different subjects are doing, you've got to concentrate on the different subjects one by one. And so, of course, any of us has a different approach on this. So uh, maybe in some situation it's easier to look at this one for half an hour and then to do go back from the beginning and do an half an hour of observation on the other one and then the third one and then the fourth one and in other situation in other studies depending on the kind of tracking you're doing maybe it's easier to do oh this did these and this other did another thing so maybe you're looking more on the action reaction uh, kind of framework so you can do the two of uh, of uh, of these when you're working with Boris uh, is, is, is it, it is up to you to decide which is the best one for you you can one animal to another uh, uh, subject to another uh, if you want to do this uh, one by one and set the behavior of one and the other or you can do one until the end then you go back and you do the other one the timing of the two will be tracked together in your final list of behaviors so when this when uh, one is doing something then there will be the precise time you press your uh, key on the keyboard and when the other one even if you do this later will come in between the previous subject just to be clear of the different kinds of approach you may use and also the different kind of approach are very much uh, uh, mirror read in the different situation we might imagine to look at sometimes you want to look at a parallel kind of uh, situation and some others as i said before action reaction um, i think we have only time to look at something about observation so observation uh, is a part of a project uh, is not necessarily a single video but it's for example a single day or uh, a single session in which you are serving your animal so you can put the notes uh, over here you can set your independent variables the location the weather and you, before you go into selecting uh, uh, when you set these, you can also set the kind of values that you're going to have here. You might want to set uh, a particular position that you previously measured. You might want to set a particular uh, value from a set like sunny, cloudy, rainy or whatever that you set before. So your student cannot be very creative and must uh, really stick with what you want uh, uh, to be as to have as a value. And then you can go to uh, temperature and number of visitors where you put down the numbers of a particular situation. So just I'm just giving an example, of course. And then here, the media. So when you have you want to have a single player, you will add your video, uh, your media, sorry, over here. And uh, it's very important to remember. This is something we stress uh, when we are teaching uh, 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 how to use Boris. When you start a project, Boris will remember the position of your media. So if you think you will record for two years your animals and you have a notebook with a 500 gigabytes hard disk, maybe start thinking that the place where you will have your video at the end, your videos at the end, is an external 
hard disk, an external hard drive. And so start by putting everything on that hard drive. So when you create the project, you can immediately point Boris to look at the hard drive and find the videos and will keep the position where the videos are. If you move the video, Boris will not be able to find the videos again uh in uh, by changing the position you got you can change the position but of course it's not that easy it's better to think uh, very well at the beginning what you want to do so the, the last minutes uh, uh some tools so let me just show you some of the tools uh, we have uh, this is a sort of a list of the different observations that you have you can filter the observation by the animal the subjects uh, in this case, there are animals, uh, the description, you can set the date, but you can also set, for example, the, the occurrence of a particular behaviors uh, or particular behaviors. And you can choose which of the observation were showing particular behaviors. Uh, and so, for example, here description contains in the pool. And so you can only study, only quantify something over this one. Then, as I said before, you may have a geometric measurement, you may have a spectrogram, you may also have uh, external information. In this case, was a profundimeter, a depth, uh, a depth sensor that was attached to this uh, turtle and was uh, uh, the, the information coming from the depth sensor was uh, uh, put together with the behavior of the of and the feeding behavior of the animal and this is something in boris you can do if you are using a standardized uh, kind of uh, uh, of data entry from your uh, sensor or your uh, uh, temperature measurement for example and stuff like that i already mentioned the coding pad uh, and i think i mentioned the fact that you can undock your your widgets let me also mention that you can of course uh, go wrong this is when you work at uh, 11 pm because you want to finish your data for the thesis or for the congress or something like that this happened to everybody sometimes happen um, happens uh, still when even if we are uh, getting of age but uh, you want to edit something wrong you have done no problem you can edit a select you can change whatever you want if you are wrong with the animal you can change the name of the animal uh the start the stop and uh, everything else okay so of course if there's some mistake you can go back there and i want to show you the fact that you can get a time budget at a glance which is something that of course you can do in r or you can do in spss or any other software you're used to but in some of the users are all the fact that uh, they have some kind of time, but, uh, uh, analysis they can do bad categories if you're using your categories or also providing a sort of uh, a, a different uh, kind of visualization of the time budget that you can export from a text file to a, a spreadsheet uh, uh software and you can also produce within boris uh, a sort of a plot from that time budget like this you got the duration of the different behaviors and the number of occurrences and you can plot the events sometimes uh, uh, users are really looking at the fact that they they are not of overs maybe or some of the behaviors that they want to have an overview at what happens and of course you can have an overview with this plot of the events with the different animals and the different behaviors and you can spot mistake to correct before exporting the data for a final analysis and of course you can also filter events as i said before so you can set okay i want to uh, focus on Nautilus uh, and uh, his uh, alert behavior and then Himal and her uh, uh, resting behavior and something like that. I think we don't have time for, for more than this. As I mentioned before, we are used to give a much longer 
a sort of hands-on experience during our Boris Day at the University of Torino. But in case some of you is interested in, uh, in this, uh, you can join us uh, for our free public days at the University of Torino, or in the case there is some more online training uh, over long time, so we can experience that together. If you have an, a question later on, not now, you can write to Olivier and me it's the best if you copy your question to the two of us, but Olivier will reply. I reply less often because I'm lazy. And uh, uh, this is our website, and please uh, do not hesitate to give Boris a try and uh, give us your feedback. And thank you so much for your attention. Uh, thank you. Thank you both for, for, for the presentation and for all your hard work uh, referring to uh, making Boris uh, a pleasant and convenient experience uh, as it gets for this kind of software. Uh, we're happy to, to take questions and we already have a first from, from, uh, from Seon. Um, she's asking whether it's possible to merge two or more videos in Boris itself whether this can be done. Yeah, maybe Olivier, do you want to answer or is you prefer? Yes, um, if you mean um, concatenating uh, two or more videos or merging uh, together. Yeah, when 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 you say uh, merging uh, looks like uh, you want to analyze them one after another. So if this is what you want to do, of course you can do this in in Boris. If you work to if you are referring to the real video, of course you not merge the video file because the idea is that Boris works on your files. It's not modifying your files. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, because yeah, so we are so not looking uh, at you, that. So, if, uh, yeah, just just uh, ask your question whether this was the right explanation or interpretation. Um, I was just wondering because my time is going to be hard to record the recording. Going to the world R, so on different dates, and we want to match, you know, the one hour recording on a particular date another one hour uh, uh, recording from another day. Is it possible to put this together while you're watching uh, using phones? And secondly, uh, uh, son, uh, son, son, give me give me a second. I think the connection is really the re the connection is really, really bad. Do you have any chance to to improve your, your microphone connection? Because I, at least for me I, I could barely understand what you were asking. Hello, is it better now? Yes, yes, this is oh, very better. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. So what I'm saying, for instance, if you have to record maybe three uh, a particular observation uh, three times in a week, maybe for one hour per day, so and you want to watch uh, maybe the first uh, hour of recording for each day, can you bring them together in Bori so that you have a stretch of like three hours video? Or do you have to watch it in bits as we have recorded them? Yeah, yeah, of course. That this is uh, sorry, maybe I'm here, but this is the idea of enqueuing the different videos, right? So you may have different videos one after another, and you can have them part of the same observation. Or if you want to split them into different observation, you can still analyze them within the same project. So you can record how many times you want per week and keep one observation for each of your video. Or maybe there is a day in which instead of doing a video of a hour, you want to do two videos of half an hour and you want to consider them together. So you put them as part of the same observation, right? This can be an idea. I think this answers what you are asking, yeah. Okay. This in, in, uh, again, this this problem with the connection sign. Okay, Hello? but I think uh, th this was she was asking. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, then, uh, can I can I take over some of the questions that I see in the chat, uh, Christian? Yeah, yeah, sure. I can I can read them all. I think uh, Luis was next. He has uh, his hand okay, raised, please. and it's uh, you, you can ask him if you want, Luis. Okay, thank you. I I, I have written them down, but uh, I I can do it uh, over the voice. Uh, I wanted to ask first. Thanks uh, for all your efforts on doing this piece of software that helped me a lot in my projects and it's wonderful uh, and the question is what are the latest developments in doris project mm. and and a second question if we have time are uh, is are there any projections to have uh, another subject as a modifier for an event for example if we have one subject doing something to another can you hear me i cannot hear you but i, I got the the question right okay can i answer uh, christian yeah Yes, yes. Can Sorry you hear about me now? the. Yeah, I, I can hear. I can hear. Okay, so uh, thank you, Luis, for, for your questions. So, about the Doris project, yeah, uh, I haven't mentioned Doris, uh, which is another software that uh, Olivier and I uh, tried to put together. So, uh, you can see uh, bad tricks and Doris that are other interesting piece of software and some way uh, very well interacting with what uh, is uh, Boris doing on the www.boris.unito.it and please check him out of course there is some development uh, but maybe Olivier wants uh, to say something about this later and uh, the second question you were asking I think I mentioned that in the um, in the in the presentation you can have a subject as a modifier of the interaction in Boris. I don't know if you are asking this about Boris or Doris, but if you are asking about this in Boris, definitely you can do that. And there is an automatically as the subjects in the modifier list. Okay. Thanks. Olivier, Thanks. do you want to answer about Doris? Yeah, uh, about Doris or Boris? <laughs> Doris. <laughs> okay, Doris. D, D, D. Uh, yeah, D, D. Uh, no, no, the, actually, the Boris, the, the Doris project is uh, paused. I'm not working uh, actively on it. Did, did you try it? Luis? Uh, we cannot hear you. At least I cannot hear you, Olivier. So the idea is that uh, uh, we are making some development, but it's not public. But uh, yeah, at the at the at this stage, we are thinking about really putting this out. Okay, so um, this will require some time, maybe to have. Uh, a uh, but uh, you worked uh, with Doris uh, uh, or not, there was some development not so far uh, time ago. So there might be something over there. Other questions? Uh, thanks, thanks, Marco. Uh, there's another one from Sun. She's asking, uh, she mentioned the app already. She's asking whether we can use Boris on the smartphone now. I remember you said there's an app for Android. Can you tell us a little bit about the functionality of this app, maybe? Uh, maybe Olivier wants to do that. Uh, Olivier, yes, um, do that. if you can hear us. The, the, do you hear? Did you do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, the the Boris yes, app go. is uh, only for Android. I'm working again on this project, but you can also you can uh, now uh, download an uh, alpha version. So it's only for live observation and you can uh, code your observation using the, the touch screen, okay? Like uh, the coding pad in the desktop version. You, you can check on the Bowie side, there is some screenshot of the app. Okay, cool. Thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, um, I remember that one of our students has used this app uh, previously and it looked really cool on the tablet and quite intuitive when she was using it. So yeah, I think many of us are looking forward to, to more developments regarding the app as well. Okay. Um, Feel this... free to send us uh, your suggestion. 
Thank you. Um, Camille has another question. She's uh, first of all saying that, uh, that it was a, a really nice presentation and she's asking whether it's possible to compare uh, within Boris the observations of two different observers. Uh, I, I assume it, she's referring to inter-observer reliability, uh, whether this is possible yeah. in, in Boris as well. Yeah, there was something about that. Uh, there was also someone uh, uh, suggesting some changes uh, on what was the first uh, approach we 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 put in the software. Yeah, uh, I mean there is some uh, some uh, chains uh, to do inter-observer reliability tests within Boris by comparing two different projects. Uh, it also depends a lot on what you have to do because if you have to do something related with the quality of the coding like for example whether a student was uh, correct or not in in uh, coding a particular behavior uh, so the quality of the behavior the, the the name resting or sleeping or monitoring okay if this is the point it is also very useful to use another software we've done which is Beatrix but you also do that with Boris. if you are more interested in checking the timing of the coding you can you can do that easily in Boris thanks Marco and uh, as, as soon as someone yeah, PI for phone version and uh, this is not happening soon okay so there's no plan in the short time to have an iphone version for okay. several reasons and um, i will not get into that but uh, iphone versions are at the moment not in the the the, the closed site and um, yeah this is one of the point the one asking by himena uh Gimena. So uh, you can import from Doris uh, to from Boris desktop to Boris up, yes, but uh, we are thinking about that. Uh, uh, how the, which is the best way to do that? The, the, we we have some ideas, uh, and uh, if you look at the app, you will get some hint about the perspective we try to move, to move on. There's no max. I I ask I answered the other question. There's no maximum duration if your computer can handle with this memory the use of Boris. But uh, if your computer is not strong enough to handle a very long video, then Boris will not be able to work with a very long video. This depends a lot with the, uh, let's say, performance of your computer sample. It's not really related with the limits of Boris. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks, Luis. Uh, Twenty-four hours files is a good uh, idea of the of the limit. Yeah, if you want to go over twenty-four hours, uh, it, it's difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, Olu Wazun uh, is asking what happens to a behavioral parameter that had no data. It's up to you. You can extract this as a zero or you can avoid it uh, from your extraction. You want to extract or what you ignore during the extraction of the of the behaviors. Is if I got it right, what is your question? And uh, of course, you can exactly do what you suggest later. You can have the, the data file showing NA for some of the behaviors, or you can avoid having those behaviors in the app. Yes, uh, Janet is asking about uh, audio analysis and sound analysis. So um, what we do usually is to uh, export the information about sounds using the text grids. So if you are, I, I see you are familiar with Pratt, what you can do is to um, 
select the start and the end of each presentation, sorry, of each vocalization in Boris, and then you will extract your coding as a Pratt text grid. Of course, when you have that information in Pratt, it will be easy to ask Pratt to extract all those calls that are named, uh, I don't know, screams or vocalizations in general, and get the, the small audio files from Pratt, cut, uh, starting. We lost Marco, yeah. I think. <laughs> and there is some movement in this okay. video. That's good. Marco, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, okay. Uh, I wasn't sure whether the the connection was cut off completely right now. Um, okay. with you, you you went stop my share. No, you went full. You went full maximum efficiency by just answering the questions yourself from the chat uh which is probably the Sorry. The, the, the best suited approach for uh, a late hour that we have here already um we just hit nine o'clock and i think this is the best time to wrap up the webinar if you uh, marco mentioned if if you have any further questions drop marco or olivier uh, or both of them uh an email uh regarding how to use boris uh, which interactions or which formats might be used best and uh, whether you would like to see any new functionality or find any bugs in the software for that um and yeah with that i just wanted to say again thank you to both of you for this really really great presentation go through uh, the software i expect that there will be a few more boris downloads uh, over the next minutes or next hours or next days. Uh, and thank you so much for this, for this, uh, for joining us here at the webinar. Um, I just wanted to say briefly that, that we will have the next webinar on October the 4th. Uh, it will be by Maria Chen, and she will be talking about uh, workers' perception of animal welfare on two dairy, uh, dairy farms in China. So if you're interested in this topic, feel free to join our webinar the next time uh, in October the 4th. And with that, uh, thanks again, Olivier, Marco, for this great presentation. And I say goodbye. <laughs>